different. It is absolutely rainy on the Oregon coast this year. There's been hardly any sunny days, so forget trying to actually press flowers. But in June, we have mushrooms growing. We have mushrooms in the lawns. We have mushrooms in the beds. I think my husband brought home a load of compost that uh, has an affinity for growing mushrooms. But they're smaller ones. And I thought, well, I don't know. Can I dry them in silica gel? And what will happen? And what can I do with them? And that type of thing. So today, I'm just going to... I have this uh, silica gel with mushrooms in it. They have been sitting there since Monday, so we're on day five, which is usually about the right amount of time. I leave them for four or five days when I'm using silica gel to dry stuff. And, I, and so I want to show you how, uh, how they turn out, what I do, talk about the process. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, then let's get started. Quick note for those of you who want things to uh, happen faster but still want to get the content go down to the cog change the setting to 1.5 or up to 2 you'll still get the content but a lot less time because people who watch my channel know that i love to talk about my thoughts so here we go i'll talk about this more later but let's let's start with what i'm doing this morning which is the silica gel i have a little dust mask that i'm going to put on and I have these containers. I bought like a 25 pack from Amazon. Originally I bought these because they work perfectly for silica gel. They come with lids and originally I bought them to be a little terrarium for when I'm starting seeds in the spring. I put holes in them and then I fill it up about halfway with uh, starting so soil, spread little rows of seeds and then I can pluck them out and put them in other pots or directly in the garden depending upon what they are. So I just, that's a side note in case you uh, want to think about doing something like that yourself. I'll see if I can find a link for these if anyone's interested. But above and beyond that, they work perfect for what we're doing today. Let me put my mask on. So all I'm going to do, and hopefully this is in camera, is I just take and then I just gently and the thing about silica gel this is um, silica gel that some of it I bought from Joann's on coupon and some of it I bought from other sources some of it I bought from Amazon some bigger bags and if I can find where I bought it all I'll put a link down below but very gently you kind of want to shake it a little while you're pouring I have five of these today I'll only do one because you'll get the idea and so I'm just, here we go, here we go, and I'm looking for the mushrooms. Now here's some coming out, so now I'm going to put this back aside, and I'm going to pick them out. And sometimes I'll use my hands, I've got a little area back behind me you can't see. So I suppose I could get a piece of paper and just show me, pull them out. Usually I just use my hands. You don't want to pull, see I was just about ready to, I was just about going to pull on this, but you don't, I was getting resistance. You want to do that. The stems are, are pretty fragile, so you want to be careful. So I'll put that back here. That's where they're going. I'm just putting them on paper behind. And the silica gel that you get commercially, it doesn't really yield a whole lot of dust, but you don't want to be breathing silica gel in because it's it's very unhealthy for you to get it into your lungs. That's why you want to make sure that you uh, kind of stand back and have a dust mask of some sort on. Taking them out. Now, after I finish uh, doing this, I'm going to show you some that I already dried, and we are going to take some silica gel off one just so you can see what I do for that. And then I will show you some that I've waxed, and then we are going to do a process of something else that I want to try, which is dipping them in some Minwax polycrylic and see if they'll hold up to that and what happens. Now I'm going to turn this around and go from the other way. 
So what I found is that, yeah, they hold up. And the biggest thing that'll happen at this point is that I'll break the stem off or something. Did we lose one down here? No. This one was a cute one. This one was on... <laughs> my mask and my glasses are making fog. I can't see. Uh, but some of them I was trying to get where it was attached to this little piece of uh, bark. Isn't that cute? <laughs> and then I got some bigger uh, chunks, I guess you'd say. But I don't know which, which container they're in. Hopefully, if it's on camera, I think I lost one. All right, well, you get the idea. So we'll move along here. I'll just finish real quick this one. So I do about one row. I don't do layer after layer. Generally, I do one row, but then I've got a lot of silica gel I've accumulated over the years. Let's move these out of the way. Bring this in. So that's what we did from that one. I'm going to take the dust mask off so I can start to see. Now here's some that this was my first test case and where I found out that oh yeah I guess I can dry them in silica gel. And so what I do after I do things in silica gel is I have these plastic containers. I put a little dry silica gel on the bottom of the container and then I put things in here until I'm ready to do something with them. And so you can see these. Some things I will wax, some things I'll spray with hairspray. None of these have been processed yet. They've just up from the silica gel in here. Some things I will, um, let's see, what is it, wax silica gel? Uh, some things don't need anything at all if you don't want. Like this is just a sort of an everlasting that already feels like paper. Things like acroclinium and and uh, straw flower and stuff. You don't really need to do anything with them, although a lot of times I'll spray them with hairspray, or as some of you have seen, uh, my X2000, uh, I love this, there are two times I love this stuff. Although when you use this on things, you've got to be careful because you can take things and almost make them translucent, or trans, kind of like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a, um, I'll think of it when I'm not trying to think of it. So when, you, so when you want to do something with these, the stems are very fragile, so you have to be careful. So I will kind of use my fingers gently to clean the stem. Let me get one that I haven't cleaned. I cleaned this one, but here's one that I haven't cleaned. So I just very gently run my fingers down the stem, and then you want to kind of cup it so it's got, got some counter pressure there. And then just use a little soft paintbrush or your finger and be very gentle because right they're very fragile right now. And the hardest part to clean, of course, is up under here. I don't know what the official name is. Somebody might want to make a comment, but I call them the gills, the gills section. Now there's lots of mushrooms out there. These are gray in the yard, so they're still gray now, but you could you could paint them if you wanted to, or you know, probably use acrylics or something like that. It's, it, you're only limited by your imagination, so do what you want. What I want to do is take a couple of these, take this one and this one that I've already cleaned, and I want to use Minwax Polycrylic and see what happens. So let me set this aside. So we'll talk about, before we do the demonstration with the polycryl, these have been waxed. Uh, I dipped them in. I have encaustic wax because I also play around with encaustic wax. Uh, and these have been dipped in wax. You can see a little pustule of wax down there on that. But for the most part, yeah, try not to make it look waxy. But what it does is it, it gives them a little bit more rigidity, although they'll still break really easily. So these have been waxed. This has also been waxed. And then what I did with this one, and let me get two hands. This is a little piece of bark that's dried. And I 
there's a little hole in here already because of some of the bugs that eat holes in, in bark and stuff. And so I took some UV resin, put down on here, and then stuck it in the hole. And so that's how this hole And then I took a little toothpick and I put a little UV resin on the stem. You can see it kind of here. It goes up the stem and then it, it's a little bit under the gill there. And so that helps with the little rigidity. Had I not waxed these, which I did, I, I probably could have just brushed on a little UV resin right on here. And then that way you'd have it better encased and be stronger. And then I'll probably take some of that two times and spray it on the bark to make the bark a little bit prettier. So what can you do with them? You can, um, you can use them. You could use the really small ones for jewelry. You could make your little terrarium situations. You could use do little shadow boxes. Uh, there's, you know, whatever you, you're going to do, you can do all kinds of things. So there's ideas floating around that I have in my head, but I want to be able to make them a little bit more stable, which is why I was trying these different techniques. Let me get some Minwax polyacrylic and then a piece of no stick paper which is under here because that's where we'll put them when we're I tend to this you can use parchment paper wax paper this is just label paper and I tend to I tend to do that for whatever reasons this is just a what I call a low profile jar that I put minwax polyacrylic in it I got this at the, uh, you know, the hardware store. I'll show you. If you want to wait a second, I'll show you what it looks like. This is, uh, it's just, this is water-based and it's, I get the satin. I don't care for gloss. So that's what that is. Works really well with flowers and such. So I think, hopefully, this is that press and seal paper. Any of my jars that I do, I put that on because otherwise lids like to stick and I just do that. All right, so we're going to take the end of the this. Still a little silica gel on there, but it, it should dilute in the, the polyacrylic. Get a go with your tweezers. And I like these little profiles so that I can dip. We're just going to dip it in. And I want a little extra to absorb under the gills. Now, it's getting a little wobbly. So I'm going to take it with my finger now. It's feeling a little wobbly in the tweezers. I don't want it to break. So I'm going to shake it a little bit. Oftentimes when I've got something in one hand and I don't want to set it back down quite yet, I will do something else in my other hand. Now that's probably enough that I could sit it down. Now you can see the stem broke on that one because I wasn't gentle enough to where I'm holding it. So just be careful. So I'll just use that smaller piece. I'll probably put this one down before I break it. And that's why I was thinking the wax might make them stronger, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. That was fun. So I want to want to do another one but I'll do them off camera I won't be able to uh, show you what they're like when they're dry because this is live and I'm not going to be editing it but it should hopefully give you some ideas that that if you can't press flowers because it's too wet out there get some uh, get a little thing of silica gel start small and play around you don't have to do mushrooms there's other things that you can uh, that you can dry. If there's a little extra here, just gently, very gently. Okay. Let's inspect this one. You want to pick it up a little bit. Now this one's not faring very well. This one is toppling over. So I don't know if we're good. The only thing about the polyacrylic that I'm noticing versus the wax is with the wax, it doesn't rehydrate it. This is a problem. Okay, this is not working very well. This is not working very well. Well, that's what we wanted to find out. If you do this, you're really going to have to be careful. 
So, uh, I don't like that idea. Okay, well, so much for that. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I, I'm sorry I'm rambling on now. I'm very disappointed. This one is going to work. This one fell apart, although I might be able to salvage it. I think UV resin, your best bets for something like this, rather than using something that's wet like polycrylic, would be the wax or the UV resin, putting a UV, little UV resin on top. So having said that, hopefully we learned something. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these silica gels out of there and play around. And at least it gives you some food for thought. And I appreciate you tuning in. And you have a wonderful day.